Because if I quickly recap here, we said that the church is not a building. We said that Jesus ended religion and in doing so ended the necessity of a building. We said that Jesus in John chapter four, verse 21, said that the hour is coming where you will neither worship on this mountain nor in Jerusalem, worship the Father. We said that Jesus said something even more provocative. He said, I will destroy this temple made with hands. And within three days, I will build another temple made without hands. Those were the very words that were used against him. In Mark chapter 15, verse 29 through 30, when he said that they, they looked at Jesus on the cross and said, you who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Again, they used what Jesus said he would do to the temple as words against him on the cross. Jesus said these words in John chapter 2, verses 18 through 19. When he said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And yet what he was talking about was his body. As John tells us in John chapter 20 through 22. And it wasn't until he had risen from the dead that the disciples realized what he said. And yet if you need further evidence to support it, remember what Stephen, the first martyr, said in his dying words. In Acts chapter 7, verses 44 through 50. When he said, the most high does not dwell in temples made with hands. For the, for the prophet says that heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me? He's saying you can't build a house for me. Did you hear that? God is saying you cannot build with your hands a house made for me. Hmm. God does not confine himself to a temple. Acts chapter 17, verse 24. Look what, 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 what Paul says. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Acts chapter 17, verse 24. If you need any more evidence or anything more to support what I'm saying, this is Bible. It says that God does not dwell in temples made with hands. So, ready for this? If you see a temple made with hands, guess what? God doesn't live there. <laughs> I mean, just take the verse, okay? Acts 17, verse 24, take the verse. And if you take that verse, you can come up with the conclusion that if God does not dwell in temples made with hands, then find every temple right now on the planet that has been made with hands. God does not live there. Whew. God does not live there. Temple thinking is not gospel thinking. Temple thinking is unbiblical. I'm going to give you one, one last, one last, one last text. One last text before we, before we shut it down. Let's go back to John chapter 2. Because John chapter 2 gives us a warning about what happens when the church becomes temple-centric. Okay? John chapter 2, and pay very, very close attention. If I could just minister this in, just, just for our closing moments here. John chapter 2, verses, 10, verses 13 through 19, gives us a visceral image of what happens when a church becomes temple-centric. Watch, read this with me. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the money changers doing business. 
When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them out of the temple with sheep and oxen and poured out the changers money. Sorry, poured out the changers money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, take these away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. So the Jews answered and said to him, what sign do you show us since you will do these things? Then Jesus answered to them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Now I'm giving you full context. Notice what happens when a church becomes temple centric. When a church becomes temple centric, it becomes a product. Ooh. I can, I can spend a lot of time on that. I won't but I can spend a lot of time on that. When a church becomes temple centric, it becomes a product. Notice what these, what we see in the text. It was at the temple that he found them selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers were doing business. I, I, I don't want to get into all the economics of what was happening in that moment at that time. Um, Cause there's a lot that's, there's a lot happening there, which we we can talk about another day. But we see here that there's a commercialization of faith, a commercialization of the church, because the church has become templified. That's a word I made up. And here's the travesty: is that when we templify the church, we commercialize the church. And now the church becomes a product and a place where services are exchanged, where goods and services are exchanged. Jesus came to take the church out of the temple. And unfortunately, we have brought the church back into the temple. So we create economic systems and institutions around what we call the church for the profit and the gain of a few. This is the travesty. The travesty is that when we make the church a temple, we make the church a product. And the church has become a product so much so that we almost as Christians, and we see this all throughout the church, we will see Christians go from one church to the next church because we're trying to find the product that we like the best. It's like food now. You know, I like that food better than that food. Let me take a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Let me go and get a little bit of that. Let me do a little bit of that. You know, I'm going to go to this church for about a year. After this, I'm guy, I got everything I need to get out of there. I got my fill here. Let me go to the next one. You know, it's like Wendy's, McDonald's, Arby's. People still eating Arby's nowadays? Okay. Arby's. Chick-fil-A. We have that for a certain period of time. We get kind of tired of that, so we go to the next one. And then we go to the next one, not realizing that we don't grow. So let me give you one last dismantling. of the idol. If, if none of that convinced you, I hope it did. Temple of worship, house of worship, all these places that we say, you know, like when people say, I'm going to go to church to go worship God. You understand now, I hope you guys can see here how that is not Bible. That is actually anti-Bible. But I'll take it one step further. And man, I am out of time. Golly, I think it was just because of all the stuff that we had going on today. The Bible never refers to the church as a building or a location. Never. The first time the word church is ever used is in Caesarea Philippi. 
And it's when Jesus says uh, to Peter in Caesarea Philippi, in Matthew chapter 18, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. That word church, because a lot of people say church, the moment you hear Jesus say, upon this rock, I'll build my church, you're thinking a temple, a church with a steeple, stained glass, cross at the top. As soon as you hear that, you say, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Okay. You got a picture of a church. Now you see why I have to destroy and dismantle everything you've thought about. Because now when Jesus, when you hear Jesus say, upon this rock, I will build my church, the last thing that should be on your mind is a building, a steeple, a temple, any of that. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church. The word church there is the word ekklesia. You can write that down. It's the Greek word for the word church. The word ekklesia is the same word that is used for gathering. Upon this rock, I will build my gathering. So rather than thinking of a church as a location then, the church is just a group of people who gather. Mm. 